Hello, and welcome to Painting of the Week. And this week, the painting we're looking at is Les Demiseurs de Rognon by the Spanish artist Pablo Picasso. And Les Demiseurs de Rognon, or the ladies, or the young ladies of Avignon, is a, a very large oil painting by Picasso uh, that was painted in 1907. And it essentially just depicts five nude female prostitutes from a brothel that was on Avignon Street, which was in Barcelona. And what I really want to begin um, talking about today, based on this painting, is is Cubism. Of course, when we think of Picasso, even people who don't know really anything about art think, oh, well, you know, Picasso was the one who started the Cubist movement. And technically, this painting is not actually Cubist, which gets kind of technical, and we won't get into that. But this painting is really the uh, the birth of Cubism. And we see a lot of the, the attributes of Cubism beginning to manifest themselves in this work. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about this painting. Um, kind of, it looks as if, as one um, critic described it, as if these figures had been carved with an axe, and it's their, the faces, these women's faces, that have really been subjected to the most obvious and the most grotesque distortions. And the fact that it's their faces that are uh, primarily what we see as being distorted here says a lot about what uh, what kind of message Picasso is trying to send in this painting. And Picasso and the other Cubists were influenced a lot by other art movements as well, particularly primitivism. And uh, the best example of a primitivist artist is Gauguin. Gauguin was very much into primitivism, looking at uh, native cultures and kind of the simplicity of those cultures and then depicting them through art. And we see some of these attributes here in the faces of these women. So the figure on the far left is said to have a kind of an Egyptian look, and then the two women uh, toward the center um, in from the left, have what are called these Iberian faces, and this was another form of primitivism which Picasso adopted, these pre-Roman Iberian bronze masks and statues that Picasso saw influenced him to the extent that he began to kind of paint different figures with this sort of Iberian look to them. And you can look at these Iberian sculptures if you want to know what I mean by that. And then the two figures on the right um, look like they're wearing African masks, and African masks and sculpture uh, or other forms of primitivism that significantly influenced Picasso and have been incorporated into this work. So one of the main questions with painting that the Cubists uh, kind of looked at in a revolutionary way was how are you supposed to depict volume, which is a three-dimensional idea, on a two-dimensional plane? And the Cubists' answer to that was the, the delimitation of volume through measurable planes, or essentially just the abandonment of perspective in favor of just this flat two-dimensional picture plane. So they, rather than try to depict things as if they were three-dimensional, even when they're not, the Cubists said, okay, we're working on a two-dimensional surface, so let's not try to pretend like we're, that we're painting on a three-dimensional surface. Let's embrace this two-dimensional flat picture plane and depict volume through different planes. So this was a, essentially just the negation of natural form. It was the complete opposite of classical painting and the traditional uh, European styles of painting, and it was really revolutionary. And the other thing that was really compromised by the Cubists was the use of color. And here we still see some uses of local color, in other words, painting things in colors in which they would have appeared in reality. But what Cubists increasingly decided to do was to use color not as a means of depicting the colors in which things appear in reality, but as a means of distinguishing different planes. And this kind of led to this uh, friendly rivalry between Picasso and Matisse and the rest of the Fauvists, who really embraced color, whereas the Cubists and painters like Picasso kind of shunned color in favor of uh, these different geometric forms that really define Cubism. And if you look at these five women, Picasso drew each figure very differently. Um, the woman on the far right there up in the corner has the heaviest application of paint, and her head is considered to be the most Cubist. And when we look at Cubism, we're looking for geometric shapes, really sharp angles, uh, different planes delineated um, at different angles set against one another. That's really what cubism means, and that's what cubism looks like. And we can see, um, particularly on that woman in the far upper right corner, how Picasso has begun to use color as a means of distinguishing different planes. So um, in her face, kind of the green streaks and the red streaks, and also um, on the top of her chest, obviously that woman's face in reality would not have been green and red, but the point was to use color to depict um, these planes coming together at different angles, right? So once again, delimiting volume um, as, an able, as a way of expressing shape in three dimensions in a two-dimensional surface. So just embracing two dimensions 
as opposed to trying to kind of wrestle with depicting these three-dimensional volumes on a two-dimensional plane. One thing that's interesting is um, the abandonment of perspective that we see in Cubism too. And for this, I would for the best example is the the woman on the bottom right. It almost looks as if we're looking at her from two perspectives at once. The way her face is oriented gives you the impression that you're looking at her as if she was sitting opposite, facing you. But then when you look at her torso and the way that her leg is extended off to the side, it almost looks as if you're viewing her um, from the side as if she was sitting sort of facing you um, at a 90 degree angle and then turning her head to look at you. So it's kind of disorienting and that's obviously one of the things that cubism loves to do is to mess with perspective and kind of um, almost trick the viewer into thinking that the figures are depicted from different perspectives at different times. Another cool thing about this painting is that um, we have a lot of preliminary sketches that Picasso drew and in the original sketches there were seven people, the five women and then a sailor and a medical student who was holding a skull. And the skull was meant as a sort of allegory or um, symbol, as um, to, to borrow a Latin phrase, what we would call a memento mori, um, kind of like a warning about death and um, urging us to consider mor our morality. But I think Picasso, and this is sort of the consensus among art critics, thought that that was maybe a little bit too on the nose and he ended up cutting out those two figures in the in the final painting which we see here which obviously just has the five women but this i think is a great example of then how picasso recognized and this is once again another cubist ideal the importance of the assertion of form over subject matter right so it wasn't important to have these two men in here who um, these women were kind of looking at with their grotesque distorted faces judging them you know the the medical student holding the skull as a symbol of their morality and their early demise that wasn't necessary um, what picasso really draws on here is what artists and art critics call the reversed gaze the fact that these figures are looking directly at the viewer and kind of judging them and that they do that and this idea of a of a self-possessed woman who's is particularly prostitutes who are no longer there solely for the pleasure of the male gaze, right? Typically, the males are the ones looking at the prostitutes, but here we see a reversal of situation, right? The gaze is reversed. Now the women are staring back at the viewer. So you can see how this painting, and cubism in general, has incorporated a lot of different types of art, and in doing so, has created a really significant kind of a new approach to art, and a new approach to the way that we not only handle volume, but subject matter, color, and a wide range of other things as well.